One of the most significant uh, questions that we as Orthodox Christians or any Christian for that matter uh, would ask himself or herself is how do I get into the kingdom of heaven? How do I attain eternal life? We believe through the scriptures that this present life is passing and that everything that is associated with the present world is temporary. That these, are, these things are passing away. This, this time is passing away. This epoch is passing away. And the question is, what, what are we doing? What can we do to escape the cycle of birth and death? Is there something that needs and is required by us in order to satisfy God so that we can enter into eternal life, what we call the kingdom of heaven? And to that degree, we have been told by Jesus many things about this question. And also throughout the New Testament, St. Paul speaks about it. St. James speaks about it. Uh, the entire New Testament, in a sense, is a manual, a roadmap, if you wish, telling us how to attain eternal life, how to, how to achieve that, or how to make that possible. And in answering that question, the New Testament uh, has given us certain uh, clear indications and it, these are the indications that we are given through through the gospel and through the letters of Paul the first thing that appears to be uh, a most significant factor in attaining eternal life or the kingdom of heaven is faith it is undoubtedly uh, the, the, the fundamental condition uh, for anyone to aspire to enter the kingdom of heaven. It is repeated, uh, it is said by the Lord, it is repeated by St. Paul, uh, it is just a non-negotiable condition in order to attain eternal life. And what is this faith? What, what does it constitute? It's difficult to put your finger on it and to say, well, faith is this, although it is defined in the letter to the Hebrews as trusting something that you don't know or you don't see or, or something invisible, something which has no visibility, but you trust in it. And so the key word here is trust. Faith is trust that God exists and that God sent Jesus into the world um, to cleanse us of our sins and through that cleansing that we are acceptable in the eyes of God. So that's faith in a, in a nutshell. Um, how does it come, this incredible um, virtue of faith? How is it attained? How is it possible to have it? Well, you can't do anything to get it except to pray. It is a gift of God. You can't read and, 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 and somehow get it from there. You can't do some exercises and get it from there. You can't uh, take vitamin pills and get it. It comes as a gift of God. It is a gift, a, a charism. And that charism, or charisma in Greek, is given to us through the Holy Spirit. There are many passages in the New Testament that confirm this issue of uh, salvation by faith. Uh, we need only to go to John's Gospel, for example, John 3.16, St. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever should believe in Him, whoever should believe in Him, will not perish but attain eternal life there we have it that 
if we have this gift of faith and we believe in the only begotten Son, that is Jesus Christ, then we have eternal life. We have the kingdom of God. Once we pass away from this world, we attain eternal life. This sentiment of faith uh, equals salvation um, is also repeated in Mark's Gospel and in St. Matthew's Gospel, particularly uh, at the end, uh, the final chapter of Mark and the final chapter of uh, Matthew, where Jesus is expressing his last will and testament. Uh, according to uh, Jewish uh, apocalyptic tradition, um, the, uh, the idea of someone um, leaving this earth and going on to the next life, um, Abraham, Jacob, the, the, the patriarchs and so forth, they would have uh, their last words spoken and there's a whole a bunch of literature from about the second and first century before Christ, uh, Jewish literature that has um, the so-called last will and testaments of Abraham, of Jacob and so forth and in it we find that as they're about to pass away they give their most important teachings. So it's interesting that if we go to the Gospel of Mark and Matthew and we, and we see what is the last will and testament of Jesus, it seems that in there we find something that Jesus wants us to remember very clearly because they are the last words spoken by him among the last words. Uh, he could have chosen anything to say in his last words. He could have said, don't steal, don't commit adultery. But what he does say um, incorporates the concept of faith and salvation. For example, uh, in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, he goes on, uh, chapter 16, verse 16, he goes on to say that whoever believes in me and is baptized shall be saved. Whoever believes in me, in Jesus, and is baptized will be saved. This is repeated also in, in the Matthean Gospel as one of the conditions of salvation. Mm -hmm. So these particular gospel tracts and also of course uh, particularly the letter mm -hmm. of St. Paul, the letter to the Galatians and so forth, well where faith is so emphasized as a condition of salvation, um, led uh, uh, Martin Luther, one of the uh, celebrated reformists of the 16th century, uh, to proclaim a particular doctrine, uh, sola fide, sola scriptura, only faith, only uh, the scripture is sufficient unto salvation. And therefore, for Martin Luther, it is, since faith is a gift, and since the work of Christ, the salvific work of Christ is also a gift that is given unto us, uh, he would he would conclude that uh, salvation uh, for the individual is a work of grace. It, it is a free gift uh, that is given to the individual uh, Christian. Mm -hmm. So the uh, doctrine of justification by grace alone uh, became a, a fundamental tenet of the Protestant Reformation. Mm -hmm. And to this day, it exists as a basic cornerstone of uh, mainline uh, Protestant, uh, Protestant theology. But is that all there is? Is it correct? Is it true that salvation only comes by faith alone, sola fide, only faith? Or is there something else associated in this uh, wonderful uh, opportunity we have that Christ has given us of uh, entering into the kingdom of God? And if there is something else, what is that something else? Well, you see, the Roman Catholic Church and the, uh, the Holy Orthodox, the Eastern Orthodox Church, uh, have a, a slightly different understanding of uh, this issue of salvation um, by faith alone. The, the Orthodox Church and the Protestant Church argue that it is the entirety of the New Testament that has to be seen. 
um, in any particular doctrine or any particular teaching in the New Testament or indeed throughout the whole Holy Scripture, one should not just isolate a particular verse or a particular book, but look at the entirety of the Scriptures and balance it out. Because otherwise we have the danger of eclecticism, that is to say, I select what I want, I select what suits me or suits my, my theology, and I ignore uh, other parts of Scripture that somehow don't fit or don't confirm or don't reinforce uh, my doctrine. And it seems that our, our, our holy uh, Protestant brothers, or at least some of them, um, seem to have missed out on a particular other emphasis which appears in the New Testament. It appears that those who emphasize sola fide, or only grace, or only faith, overlook many other passages uh, in the Gospel and in the letters of Paul and in the letter of James that indicate that works are also involved in the salvific process. That, yes, I need faith. That is, that is indisputable. No Catholic, no Orthodox could argue against that. We are one here with our Protestant brothers. We need faith. Without faith, we cannot move forward. But we see through the New Testament that there are passages that suggest that if I just work through faith alone and there are no works associated with that faith, or grace, then that faith is not a real faith. Then that faith does not correspond to the will of Christ. And therefore one would question whether a person who says, well, I am only saved by faith, and he or she does nothing else but just rely purely on their personal faith, but does no more than that, one would question the nature or the quality of that faith. Because, you see, if we look at Scripture, um, and it is, uh, it is uh, ample, um, we find that, um, for example, if we go to James chapter 2, verse 17, it says that, that faith by itself if there are no works associated with it, is dead. So, how can I say I am justified only by faith and therefore I will do no works when if I do that, I am therefore, um, I am therefore possessed by a pseudo-faith, uh, an erroneous faith, which somehow does not correspond with the actual gift of faith. Because if I have received the actual gift of faith, then I should express it, confirm it, and, and, and manifest it by the works that the faith compels me to do. Uh, how many times uh, do we hear Jesus say, uh, for example, um, um, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works. That they may see what? Your good works. Uh, again, we find um, in James himself uh, saying to us that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. And that is in James 2.24. Now that's a remarkable statement that a man or a woman, a child, is justified by works, by my works of charity, by my works of philanthropy, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I am justified that I cannot just say I believe without having works to back it up. Uh, another part, Jesus says, those who just say, Lord, 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 but do nothing, what, what, what good is that? Lord, 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 but, but there's nothing to back up my uh, calling out to the Lord, 
then in a, in even the Lord himself uh, <laughs> does not accept it, which is, that's pretty heavy, right? And then we find again that, uh, again, going back to James uh, in verse, in chapter 1, uh, verse 27, and this is quite remarkable. He says, true religion, true religion, in other words, if you wish true faith, uh, true doctrine, true grace, is this and how does he define it does he say uh, you know um, having uh, a particular doctrine or a particular a particular form of belief no true faith or true doctrine if you wish or true religion if you wish is which is pure before God that's pretty strong it's pure before God it's innocent before God it's it's worthy of God to look upon and bless it, the Holy God. True faith, true religion, he says, is to take care of orphans and widows. Now that's words. So, what, what, are, what are we saying? Are we saying that we should forget faith? By no means. By no means. That is just... Uh, uh, again, uh, 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 going to another extreme. Without faith, we can do nothing. Okay, we can do nothing without true faith. But true faith will make us do good works. Now, finally, uh, I will take you to uh, the Lord Himself, Jesus, um, who says in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter twenty-five, thirty-one to 46 and perhaps that is the strongest of all of our uh, biblical uh, verses that will uh, confirm that salvation can come through works salvation can come through works in the name of Christ of course is this that uh, we are told in the final in the second coming of the Lord uh, when the end of the world has come and the world will be judged that the Lord will divide all the nations and all the people into two categories. Uh, on his uh, right hand side, he will put the so-called sheep. And on his left, he will put the goats. In the, in the Hebrew world and in the Roman world of the time, the right is meant to be the good side and the left is meant to be the sinister side. In fact, the word um, uh, sinister comes from the Latin sinestra, which means uh, left. Um, so, given that symbolic um, uh, division between those on the right and those on the left, uh, we find the Lord sitting on his throne judging the world. Okay, so it's an apocalyptic moment, it's a, it's a second coming moment, it's what we call the parousia, the the, the moment of parousia, the moment of manifestation, the moment of final judgment. And we all want to know where we stand. We all want to know, are we going to make it into the kingdom of heaven or, or not? And, um, and uh, we hear the following words from the Lord. That, come you who are blessed of my Father, come and inherit eternal life. Come and inherit uh, the kingdom of God. And he's speaking to the sheep that he has put on his right high, on his right side. Now, what did they do to deserve eternal life? The sheep. Did they pronounce a particular doctrine? Did they uh, build a particular type of structure for God? What What is it that they did that, or or thought, or what What was it that made them uh, acceptable unto God? unto eternal life, unto salvation. Well, this is what we hear. You fed me when I was hungry. And that's a work. You fed me. Uh, you gave me clothes when I was naked. That's a work. That's works. Uh, you came and visited me in hospital or when I was sick. That's, that's action. Okay. Um, you you saw me when I was in prison. Again, that's action. Uh, you gave me to drink when I was thirsty. 
So we see a whole list of uh, human compassion, a whole list of philanthropy, if you wish, that is directed towards him, towards Jesus. They will, they will say to him, look, we, 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 we never really thought of it in, that we were helping you. We, 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 we didn't, we didn't, we never saw you poor or hungry or in jail. So please don't get us wrong. We don't want to lie to you. We want to enter the kingdom of God. But we are honest people. We never saw you when we helped the poor. We didn't see you. We, we thought we were helping the poor. He says, as long as you did this to the least of my brethren here on earth, you did it to me. So there we have it. The solidarity of Christ with poverty. The solidarity of Christ with pain. I was, I was sick. The solidarity of Christ with the imprisoned, the captive Christ. Uh, the solidarity of Christ with those who are hungry and, and without drink. The, the solidarity of Christ with the poor, with poverty. Identification of Christ with poverty. To the point that in helping them you are actually doing it to Christ. They therefore inherit the kingdom of God on the basis of their work, on the basis of their philanthropy, of course, to Christ, because they did it to Him, you see. Uh, he accepted it as for Him. So therefore, we now come, and, and, and incidentally, those who did not help anybody, those who did not do any works, they may have, they may have said they believe in Him, but they did no works at all, right? They were excluded from eternal life. So, how do we conclude now? Are we to say that you are saved by works alone? No. That is certainly implied in the New Testament, but we've got to take the whole New Testament as a whole, rather than one particular passage. Can we say, therefore, that we are saved only by faith? Well, of course, in some passages that is suggested. But again, we need to balance the scriptures together. So what is the conclusion? The conclusion is obvious, my friends. It's obvious. It doesn't need a PhD in theology to work it out. You've got on the one hand a whole series of statements by Jesus, by Paul, and so forth, that we are saved, we receive grace through faith that is indisputable, non-negotiable, and no Orthodox or Catholic should ever contradict that. You cannot contradict that. That is purely biblical. That cannot be contradicted. But on the other hand, nor can this be contradicted, that works in some passages of the New Testament are also salvific. They offer salvation. If they are done for Jesus, they offer salvation. So what's the conclusion? We have to put them together. We have to balance them. And we say, we are saved through faith and by manifesting this faith by good works. Those two together are the best that we human beings can say are a guarantee on the road towards the kingdom of heaven. So, let us pray for faith it is a gift of God. Uh, those of you who may feel you don't have it, uh, I ask you to pray to God the Father that He would give you that gift through the Holy Spirit. And then you need to express that faith and confirm it and seal it by the good works that you will do in the name of Christ. With those two together, my friends, is the road to eternal life. May God bless you.